Okay guys, we're fixing to cut this whole wall out here. We're gonna be putting a window in our house here. We used to have French doors here uh, originally, and we've kind of gotten where we want to have more light back into the house here and more of an airflow through the house, so we've ordered a window. We're gonna cut this back out, and we're gonna install a five foot by three foot window in this hole here, and we have it leaning right over yonder. Uh, I'm just getting all the measurements ready. I'm marking where my original door frame was at in this wall here because it's still in the wall. The window should fit the original five foot door frame that used to be in the wall. So that's all I'm doing is marking it out where I can cut the sheetrock. Hey guys, we've got the window measured out. What we're going to do is we're going to do this from the inside out. This way we won't have to worry about our house getting moisture in or anything. We're going to go ahead and cut all this off in here. We're going to take everything out to the outside wall, reframe it all from in here. That way when we get ready to cut the outside out on a pretty sunny day, we can just take the saws off, cut it all out, let the outside fall out, be able to put the window right back in and be able to uh, get this done without getting anything in the house. Okay guys, this is where our wood heater originally was. The, uh, the pipe that's on this heater used to go out through right here. There was a thimble in the wall. And now we're replacing it with a window here. And we're taking the insulation out now and all we do is I just take my pocket knife and go along and I just cut the insulation in the wall. I know there's no wiring in the wall here so I don't have to worry about it. The only wiring is right here at this plug. And I just try to cut the insulation all the way to the outside wall. You want to be careful too that you don't drop your knife down in the wall. Once we get that done, basically it's just a matter of just grabbing the insulation and we're trying to be gentle so we don't have to stir up a bunch of fiberglass or anything, being real easy with it. Paper taken off. We do it that way we're exposing our studs and this is our outside wall so we're going to take this out of the house and we'll be ready to start taking the machine and cutting these off and trying to get all that taken out of the wall. Okay guys, we are uh, on the next phase now. We've got an electrical box right here that's in the middle, it's in the window. What we're going to do is we're going to move this electrical box down here. I have measured the center of this wall. Code says if I have a wall this length, I have to have a plug-in in it according to international code. So what I've done is I've centered the plug underneath this right here and this is sheetrock. So we're going to take, and take my sheetrock saw and we're using an old work box. This old work box has a little flanges that flips out on it. It's made for going in and doing reconstruction with. These little things you just flip them out and once you get the hole cut. So I've got my hole marked. And I'm going to take a sheetrock saw. And I'm going to be careful not to hit my electrical wire in the back back there. Because you just punch it through lightly like that. You don't want to push it in too far. You just want to take your time. You don't want to cut this hole too big because if you cut this hole too big, this old work box will not work. It's got to be cut an exact size. So you got to measure that box and make sure you get it just right. Alright, we're almost there now. We're gonna pop that out, and you see there's insulation in behind it, so we don't want to we don't want to ruin that. What I'm gonna do is try to locate the electrical wire, which it is right here at my fingertips. So I want to make sure now the test fit the electrical box fits perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kill electricity. We're gonna take the wire out of this, pull it down. Bring it out this right here, run it into this box, and we're going to rewire us a plug-in right here in this box. Okay guys, we've got the wire fished back down through the wall here. 
This is where it was in the other box up there, and this is the new work, or the old work box. We're gonna fish this through it. You have to be careful because these things can be aggravating at some time. And not mess up the uh, coating on the outside of your Romex here. And I like to leave myself a little slack in the walls while I'm working. I don't like to pull a wire tight. You never know when you're going to have to go back into a wall and work on something. Now, this is the little ears I'm telling you about here. They just flop up and down. You want to flop them up. You want to push this thing inside the wall like that right there. And you make sure I get the one on the other side taken care of here before I ever... Make sure you get them all both working before you stick them in there because sometimes they will hang up. Okay. And once you push that in there like that, all you have to do is, I'll take my little drill motor here, and when you start turning it, well, I figured it was going to do that. You just take it and don't over tighten it. You'll feel it when it starts to touch. Sometimes you run into issues where these screws and this little ear that flips out will not start in there and they'll just strip the head out on this. And we almost had that problem with this one. So I take them off and I just take and I go ahead and thread them through it outside it because if you don't, you'll never get it in there. It's just, that's just a common problem with these boxes. And I'm going to stick that screw back through the hole. Just to tell you, these things do happen. Don't be freaked out about it when it happens because it, it's just a common problem that every now and then you, ha you face this. Okay, now we're going to slide that box back in that hole. You gotta overcome the obstacles. Don't you don't fret about it. It's just one of them things. If it don't work, you gotta fix it. When it tightens down, stop. And I don't recommend doing this with a drill motor unless you're used to doing it. I recommend doing it by hand because you can break that thing really easy with a drill motor. And these boxes are not cheap. So now that we have that. What we're going to do is I like to leave myself just a little bit of slack of work. I don't like I don't like things being too tight where I'm working at. And I'll leave myself about this much space to wad the wires up in there because it's just a lot easier to work with them. To get there. Now all I'm going to be doing from this point on, I'm just going to, I, I take my knife and I'll reach up in there and I'll cut the the plastic sheeting off the sides and you want to be careful when you do that not to actually cut into one of your other wires and expose the copper I've done this so many years I know about how hard I'm going to push now this here happened to be a number three uh, wire 12 it has two hot wires in it we're not going to use one of them one of them I'll just fold it back up and shove it back in there and it just doesn't get used. It's not hooked up on the other end. I always take the covering off the ground. Now basically what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to wire it into the plug. Now your plugs, you have a green, a green screw on it. That's your ground. You'll have a silver screw. That is your white common. And on this side you'll have a gold screw. That's your black hot wire. Now you want to be able to make sure you get this right because of some appliances require polarity. And what that means is you have a wide plug on one side of your prong and you have a narrow plug. The wide side will always be your ground or your neutral wire. The narrow side will always be your hot side of a plug-in. You want to always make sure you wire it that way on the, on the receptacle so that your polarity and whatever you're running through this plug works right and you don't burn something up. Some people use strippers. 
for this, I've always just used my pocket knife because it means that I don't have to tote an extra tool and I usually strip mine back about an inch. And I'll take my wire cutters and I go ahead and I just roll me a half hook like a fish hook in each one of them. That makes it a whole lot simpler and I always do my ground first because it seems like the ground is the hardest one uh, to do and I always do mine in the direction, let me show you how, I mean, if I can get this and twisted right, I always tighten mine in the direction in which I'm going to be turning the screw. Now the ground is usually the one that will give you the most trouble about getting on there because the screw tightens to the right. I make sure my as I tighten it, that my hook is in that direction because if you if you have it in the opposite direction and you try to tighten it down, it, it pulls the hook out from under the screw. The same thing I'll show you here with the with the um, white one. We're going to be hooking up on the silver side. Because we tighten in the to the right, righty tighty, lefty loosey, we go with that. We want to put the hook facing the right side so that as we tighten it, and I always put my thumb up there because it helps me to hold my screwdriver in place. As we tighten it, it, it pulls that down perfect like that. Now I'll spin this around. Same thing here. I hook it on. We're going to be tightening it to the right. The hook is to the right black on the gold side and then I'll turn this thing back around and I'll fold my wires back in my box so that when I push my plug in I don't have to worry about this hot wire here this this naked common uh, ground coming in contact with that and I'll usually move my screws to the side and go ahead and shove it all the way in at least once then I'll take my drill motor run it down. Now I don't tighten it all the way till I get a... I like to make sure my plug is centered in my box so that when I put my plate on alright there we are and then I'll take I usually take my pliers and kinda tap those ears a little bit. What happens is a lot of times They'll get bent out, and when you put your cover over it, you'll get something to get broke when you tighten it down. But other than that, I'm just going to stick my plate on here with that one screw in the middle, and we should be good to go. Okay, we're going to slide the plate up over it. We've got good coverage. We have no holes exposed. That's the one good thing about an old workbox. And you just take that screw and be very careful that you don't strip it, and then start it in there. And do not over tighten it. As soon as it touches, that's it. Now we're going to test it to make sure that we've got everything back. I'm going to turn the power back on. We're going to hook our vacuum cleaner up. Good to go.